<laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Chip Cooney from the Animal Hospital of Statesville. Today we're going to talk about dog dermatology, which is a study of dog skin, an extremely complicated subject. And Kyle here today is going to ask me a few questions that are common that we hear, and we're going to see if we can answer them as best we can. All right, we'll start with what causes skin problems in dogs? Where do you begin? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it because it's easier to answer what doesn't cause skin problems in dogs. You know, we see allergies cause it. We see parasites like fleas or ticks cause problems. We see endocrine problems like thyroid disease and adrenal gland disease cause problems. We see burns that can cause problems. There are just many, many things. Even cancers can cause problems with the skin. Mm, yep. Our dermatology issues painful for my dog. So it depends. I like to tell people dermatologic issues are uncomfortable. Um, painful, you know, things like hot spots, yeah, those become painful and I routinely put those dogs on pain medicine. Um, but general uh, skin conditions are just uncomfortable, affect the quality of life for a dog. Probably like a person, you know, unless you have a wound or something that's just irritating and Irritating is a good way of putting it. Yep. So what are some signs and symptoms that would tell me that my dog may have a skin condition? So, you know, there are many, many problems. And of course, everybody can see hair loss or inflammation or bleeding or things like that. But, but licking or chewing at the feet or at the belly and um, chronic anal sac problems, infections that continually occur, ear infections that occur over and over again. Um, you know, you see them scratching at their ears a lot. Um, so, yeah, there are many, many different things that we see. Um, most of the time they come in for chewing and licking, though. That's the major thing we see with skin issues. So what tests might be performed to diagnose my dog's skin condition? So invariably we're going to do what's called a skin cytology, which is where we take a piece of tape and we take it and rub it across the surface of the skin. We'll take it and process it and stain it looking under the microscope. And this helps us determine some basic infection and mites and those type things. So that's almost always going to be done, as well as obviously a full physical exam on, on any pet who comes in. From there, we let the skin test and the signs kind of lead us where we might go. So it, it could be some blood testing, some hormonal screening it could be even to the point of biopsy or, or needle aspirate it just depends on where that first test starts us another thing we seem to do often especially in younger dogs is a skin scrape and that's looking for those skin scrapes are looking for the mites uh, mites live deeper under the skin as opposed to um, some of the other infections which are on the surface mm -hmm. of the skin so sometimes you have to um, scrape the top layer of the skin off and make the skin ooze a little bit to get down to where the mites truly live if you're going to find those guys. Well, that's just one we seem to do pretty often. It is, it is. What are some common skin conditions in dogs and how are they treated? That's kind of a <laughs> big generality there, but it, it is, it is. So so you know we see we see food issues with dogs, um, food sensitivities, and those are treated many times with, with diet changes. Um, the most common thing we probably see are allergies whether it be food related, whether it be pollen related, whether it be flea bite related. Um, and in those cases, you either do medications to help blunt the allergic response, or um, we actually go to try to find out what the pet's allergic to and try to teach the pet's body not to be allergic to that. <laughs> Truly allergy shots in dogs. We see autoimmune disorders, and, and those have to be treated um, usually with, with, uh, with um, immunosuppressive drugs, anti-inflammatories to, to control those type things. Um, we see dogs who have congenital or heritable conditions, um, and those, depending on the, the situation, we will, we will have to um, do specific things for specific, specific treatments because, you know, there are 60, 100 of those, <laughs> so you got to kind of determine what more you're going to deal with. We see hormonal problems. Low thyroid, hypothyroid is not at all uncommon and frequently causes skin issues. Um, we can see a disease called Cushing's, which is an adrenal gland disorder. It can cause skin issues um, as well. Um, we see what we call keratinization disorders, which are problems where the skin doesn't slough off the way it should. And that's usually secondary to hormonal issues or in some cases, the breed of the dog is, is predisposed to that. Um, those are usually treated with, with shampoos 
um, to, to control those type of things. We see cancers, um, skin cancer definitely occurs in dogs just like it does in people. <laughs> parasites is a huge, parasites are a huge issue um, here in North Carolina, primarily fleas, also ticks, also some other um, topical parasitic issues that we have to, to treat, but those usually are fairly easily treated, which is kind of nice with some with some good products. Um, there's something called zinc responsive dermatitis, and that's usually just huskies, German short hairs, malamutes, just a few breeds that are predisposed to this, that it's as simple as giving them a supplement of zinc. Um, can make a big issue to them. And there's even a bizarre syndrome called hepatocutaneous syndrome, which is where liver disease, severe liver disease, can lead to severe skin issues. That's a bad syndrome. Very fortunate, I've only seen it a few times in my career because there's not a lot you can do about that. Mm -hmm. um, those pets are having liver problems, which is causing the skin issue. Sounds like a nightmare for Dr. Google. <laughs> yes, it my, does. My dog might have this. My dog might have that. Don't go to Dr. Google. Go to your yeah, doctor. He probably hates that disease as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the difference between atopic dermatitis and contact dermatitis? Yeah, those are kind of a similar beast, if the truth be known. Most of my atopic dermatitis is caused by a contact dermatitis, <laughs> but atopic dermatitis is a sensitivity over a period of time. So you don't do this and have an atopic dermatitis. It's an allergy to grass, like we're sitting in right now, or the trees that are blooming now. Um, but it takes a while for that to build up. A, a contact dermatitis is something like a chemical burn um, or an ant bite. You know, those yeah. are the things. You come in contact with something and it causes a problem now as opposed to over a period of time. So what are curable versus incurable skin problems in dogs? <laughs> Again, so, down the list. <laughs> yeah, so, so fortunately, most of our skin conditions are curable or manageable. How about that? Um, so skin infections are usually curable, all right? Parasites are curable. Thyroid disease may not be curable, but it's manageable. Skin infections may be secondary to allergy, which is not curable, but it's manageable. <laughs> so it, it, it's more managed versus, versus cure than, than incurable, I think. So um, it's a, it depends, uh, answer uh, question uh, to the depends. question. Well, like I say earlier, derma, dermatology is such a vast topic, um, a very challenging topic, and you've taken this huge bucket Ooh, of things yeah. that might be causing a problem and you've got to funnel it down and get to the basis and many times you have to treat this this and this and get those out of the way to get down to here to try to figure out what truly is the main problem and sometimes it's as much a doctor control as it is a client control what they can do for their pets and what they will do in, in consistent treatment isn't it well it is um, and that's one of the many things we talk to clients about is expectation has to be realistic because you talk about about the incurable versus what I'm calling manageable. While some things are totally curable, many skin conditions are gonna require some type of long-term management. It may be as simple as bathing your dog once or twice a month. Um, it may be as simple as giving an antihistamine twice a day. Um, it could be more involved, just depends on what the problem happens to be. So with all that being said, if you think your dog has a skin issue or you notice that your dog has a skin issue, give us a call for an appointment. We can't tell you what it is over the phone um, by any means or from a picture, yeah. but the longer a skin issue continues, the worse it may become and the harder it is to treat. No doubt about that. It's always easier to treat things early. Yep. That goes for a lot of different <laughs> conditions. Okay. Thank right. you.